Hello and welcome to tutorial number 8. My name is Deborah Wynn Arbenlow and I'm a blogger and photographer for Second Life. Today I'm going to teach you how to use light leak and other similar effects with the blending mode as well as the blur tools to create softer or more ethereal effects with your photos for Second Life. This will work for other kinds of photos as well, but I'm directing this as usual primarily towards Second Life photography. So we start with our photo. Your photo should be complete aside from this overlay by the time you get to this stage. So you should have done any kind of editing that you want to do to your photo already. Uh, for the sake of interest, this is a Genesis Nicole head. It's a mesh head. This is a Magica hair called Beans and this pose and prop is from Le Poppycock. So we take our finished photo aside from the overlay and we are going to put an overlay on top of it. You can find them on Google. Let's just go to Google. We're going to search light leak overlay. Pulls up a bunch of stuff. So if you go to images, you can find all kinds. You can save the ones that you like for use for your photos. I already pulled some that I like to show you the kinds of different effects that you can do. So let's start with one. Here is a sort of gradient effect with a really light center. Depending on the kind of blending mode that you use, you will get a different effect. So blending mode is here. This button pulls up all these options. So let's try a couple of common ones. The most common ones that I use are multiply, screen, and soft light. There are other ones that you can use and you can play around with them, but those are the most common blending modes that I use. So if we hit multiply, multiply darkens your image and it emits most of the white area in the photo. Screen is pretty much the opposite of multiply. So it creates soft effects on the outside and then it lightens or washes out anything with the white. Soft light absorbs a lot of the oh, soft light, not vivid light. Soft light absorbs a lot of the color into the photo itself as opposed to laying it on top. So you can do lots of different effects depending on your blending mode. So let's look at what this looks like. If we would like to use the screen mode but we have a too much white in the center, you could invert your photo. You could go to... Um, I don't even know where I'm going anymore. <laughs> Uh, you can go to Image, Adjustments, and Invert, or you can hit Control-I, which is easier. I usually just use shortcuts. Alright, so I hit Control-I and I inverted my image. Now I have an image that's not really the color that I want, but it has dark in the center, so I could use it to screen. So let's look at screen now that I've inverted it. See how it emits the dark? So screen washes out light colors and omits dark colors. Now say I wanted an effect that I had to invert and I didn't like the color it was anymore, I could just change the color in hue saturation. So I'm going to hit Control U and it brings up hue saturation. I will move my hue bar up and down until I find the kind of color I'd like. So if I move it up, you can see it starts to turn certain colors. If I move it down, it starts to turn other colors. So I'm going to go with something that looks kind of like a sunset. So that looks a little sunsetty to me. Maybe we want to desaturate it, less color. So now I have this cool sort of hazy effect based on this overlay. So this is what the overlay looks like without being blended. And you can change this with all kinds of different tools like hue saturation. So this is a cool effect. We kind of like this. But let's see what other effects we can do. So here we have another kind of effect. This is a vintage uh, light leak film burn sort of effect. It looks a little bit like a mist. This kind of effect, because it has a lot of white, we know is going to wash out our photo if we screen it. But maybe in soft light it'll absorb just some of the color and it looks pretty soft and nice. This is a lot more about creativity with what you're doing and a lot less about following step-by-step -step instructions. So pardon the tutorial not being quite as step-by-step -step as it usually is. 
Another type of layer we can do is something that has like bokeh. This is effect is called bokeh. And then this is like sun streaks, sort of uh, uh, sunlight, sun rays. And then it has a lighter section up here. It's almost like a lens flare. Now if I want to play with this one, because it has all of this white, lots of light colors, we probably will want to do soft light. Now see how the effect sort of lays over. It almost looks like it's spotlighting my the area that that light part was in, and then it has these cool little light, almost looks like dust particles in the camera. So I like all these effects, but let's go with this one for what we're doing next. So I've created an overlay effect that I like. I'm going to flatten my image. I'm going to layer and flatten my image. I'm going to discard these other layers because this is the one that I want. Now to further soften this image, I'm going to use the blur tool. I'm going to use specifically iris blur. So we'll go to filter, blur, iris blur. Now iris blur pulls up menus on the side that you can play with. For the sake of this tutorial, we're going to have our iris blur set to 15 pixels. So the way iris blur works is everything outside the oval gets blurred. Everything inside the oval has progressively less blurring. Where these white dots are is where the blur starts. So if you want your face to not have blur on it, make sure it is within the realm of these white dots, which it is in this case. If you'd like to increase the area that has less blur, you can widen and heighten. You can edit this in many ways. So now let's look what it looked like before and after. Before and after. So you can see that it blurs this progressively towards the center, creating a softer effect. So let's click OK. We'll say that we like this. And then we have this soft, glowy sort of effect. So before we had the blur, we just had the soft glow effect. After the blur, everything looks just a little bit softer and more ethereal. Then let's look at what it looked like before. Let's see. Before we put this on, we just had this, right? Blur gallery. So it's a totally different sort of look with just a few steps. And mostly this is going to be trial and error for you, finding the right kind of overlays to use, finding what works for you, finding what you think looks best. You can play with opacity levels on your blending modes so you can have less or more. There are many ways that you can do this to make it sort of your own and still create these cool um, ethereal soft effects to surround your photo. That is it for this tutorial. I hope that this has been educational for you. If you have any comments or you would like to request a type of tutorial, you can leave me a message on YouTube in the comments. You can send me a message on Plurk, on Flickr, or in Second Life. Thank you for joining me, and I'll catch you next time.